What's up, guys? This is Liam Beeson from Brand of Sacrifice, and you are watching Slasher Pepper. Enjoy that shit, motherfuckers. Hey, guys, Slasher Pepper. Welcome to another video. Today, I have another interview, this time with Liam Beeson from Brand of Sacrifice. How are you doing? Fantastic, man. I'm just enjoying my Thursday and ready to get our, some good conversation going. Awesome. Me too. Um, so my first question was, when did you start playing guitar? Um, so I started playing guitar back in probably 2008. I bought my first guitar or I actually got it for a Christmas present. And, um, I just started learning basic songs. I played maybe six months and then I said, you know what? I want to play drums. So I got some drums for my birthday, which is roughly six months later. And that is what I, I played. I played drums for about five years and I loved it. I didn't play much guitar and then um, I moved to Toronto. I was in a small suburb and I moved to Toronto and I couldn't play drums anymore because I lived in a townhouse so the neighbors would hear me. So really from 2012, I started playing guitar. So about eight years. Awesome. Um, actually, one of the members from Vendet, um, one of their guitarists, do you know Vendet? It's like the um, new band from... Is that Corey um, Taylor's songs? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think their guitarist also started playing drums for us. So that's quite interesting to hear. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to have diversity and be able to play different instruments and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And um, who are some of your inspirations on guitar? Uh, damn. There's a band called uh, Necrophagist from, I think he's from Germany. Mohammed is his name. But he was like, it's insane, like death metal from the early 2000s. And the guitar solos were just like, wow, like I had to learn how to play guitar like that. So he was my biggest inspiration, the band Necrophagist. Um, I didn't really have many other guitar influences, just other bands that were big at the time, like Whitechapel and Carnifex and those right. kind of deathcore bands around the mid, mid to late 2000s. Born of Osiris was a big one. Um, yeah, that's about it. I didn't, I didn't take too much... Uh, huge inspiration i just liked playing songs and listening to bands right you kind of tried to create your own sound yeah yeah i was really big into the whole born of osiris veil of my uh, after the burial sound um and that's what i tried to do back then at least awesome and um when can we expect another uh brand of sacrifice album it's hard to say with everything going on man right um, because when you put out an album, you have to have a touring cycle to push the album, promote the album, market the album. So um, it's looking like maybe the spring, maybe summer, we have to see, but um, that's what it's looking like at the moment. How's it going with uh, recording the album or are you still it's guys doing writing It's all finished. No, it's oh, all finished. damn. We're just sitting on it because there's no point releasing it now. And then what if we can't tour for a year? People forget about the album and, you know, touring right. is where we make money and promote the, promote the album and make fans. So we have to really line it up properly. Right, right. How do you think the album turned out? Have you uh, given it a listen yourself? Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> And I can say that because I'm not the primary writer. I, I wrote a couple of riffs, but Leo, the other guitarist, um, he writes like everything. And Kyle does all the lyrics and the vocals, obviously. But um, yeah, Leo's amazing. It's, it's, it's heavy, it's aggressive, and it still has catchy parts to hopefully get some new fans because it's not, I think it's not so much um, death metal. There's, there's more death core and maybe some new metal parts to it um, but it's still very extreme so i think we're gonna get um good reception from a wide variety of of metal, metal heads awesome sounds good yeah, i can't man. wait to hear it i'm excited yeah and um what's the hardest song to play from uh, brand of sacrifice uh <laughs> there's a couple i don't know because we haven't played them live so i don't know right how hard they would be but probably Casca off of the first EP, The Interstice. Um, it's pretty fast and there's a lot of like left-handed uh, fast motion. So 
to get the right hand and the left hand in sync with each other is pretty hard for that song. So I'd say Costco. I love that song, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's my favorite to play live, actually. Ironically, even though it's the hardest. <laughs> I mean, you should always be up for a challenge. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely and push yourself. Exactly. And um that brings me to my next question. What's uh the your favorite song from Brand of Sacrifice? I will say Casca and Fortress, which is Fortress. We've opened up the set, the live, uh, the live set for our concerts. We usually have opened up with Fortress lately, and that's really like right off the bat, lots of energy, gets the crowd pumping, people are excited, and yeah, both really fun to play live. They're, if I have a favorite song, it's because it's fun to play live. Oh, That'll right. Why it's my favorite? Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's. Um... I'd have to go with uh, Eclipse because that breakdown yeah. is just so good. <laughs> yeah, that last 30 seconds is the most fun part of the entire set. Just like the welcome to the new age thing. That oh, yeah. I just love that. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's so good. I miss it, man. I miss it. It's fun to play. Yeah, this is uh, this interview probably um, makes you miss it even more. Tell them about <laughs> it. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> and um, what are some of your personal favorite musicians? Um, like I said earlier, I like bands generally. Um, I like uh, a band called Silent Planet. Um, I'm trying to think, <laughs> I've been um, I haven't been listening to normal music lately on Spotify. I will be searching up old bands I used to listen to when I was a teenager. So, um, Born of Osiris is another favorite. My favorite band ever is a band called Despised Icon from Montreal, Canada. Um, it's like death metal, but it's like the first deathcore band when they mix death metal with hardcore. Oh, right. The first ever deathcore band. I quote me on that. Anyone will agree with me. <laughs> who, anyone who has a brain will agree with me. Um, yeah, I'll say Despise Icon. And like I said earlier, Born of Osiris, Fail of Maya, After the Burial. Those bands were huge. I love Amir. Um, and then a bunch of bands that we've toured with, Signs of the Swarm, Shadow of Intent. Enterprise Earth, bands like that, Born Shore. Awesome. Great deathcore bands. I'm a huge deathcore guy, so. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. what kind of normal musicians do you listen to? Or did you used to listen that to? That is normal for me, baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. I like, I don't ever put on rap music, but I love like really ignorant SoundCloud, like face tattoos big jewelry like gangster <laughs> soundcloud rap like i love that shit so much and um uh, i also like softer bands like chon um kind of like technical fusion jazz metal bands stuff like that but uh i, I don't branch out too much aside from deathcore and i guess some pop punk here and there but not too much man just i stick to what i know and uh, the punk bands are like misfits or something or um no no like uh, have you heard billy talent oh yeah yeah billy talents i know they're big in a lot of well germany mainly but um in canada too because they're from here but billy talents like one of my favorite bands there's a band called close your eyes um it's about it I, i can't think on top of my head but i do like the kind of upbeat lots of singing oh yeah um, me too big choruses like fit for kings another band they're i mean they're still super heavy but um they do like big choruses and catchy parts so well so hopefully oh, yeah, we can sure. tour with them because i'd love to watch them every night that'd be amazing yeah it's such a bummer that the tour was canceled it makes me feel a little bit better that everyone's tour was canceled so it's not so bad <laughs> right you're not alone not, in this <laughs> yeah it's not it's not personal it's, it's right business. <laughs> and um Are you a fan of horror movies? Because uh, often you, you know, metal heads and horror fans are kind of like similar, you know, kind of go hand yeah, in hand. Yeah. yeah, I um, I do like, like I watch horror movies, but I'm not like a cult. I don't, I'm not like a cult following where I'll have like, my brother has like lots of action figures of Freddy Krueger, Jason right. Voorhees and stuff like that. He loves that kind of stuff, but I never got them, not, got into it that much. In fact, I was pretty scared of, uh chucky the little doll <laughs> when i was younger oh it gave me nightmares man um 
but nowadays i mean i don't think horror movies are as good as they used to be nowadays but i'm not the biggest horror movie guy okay cool yeah i mean you're not alone with that either there are a lot of people (laughs) that are that are afraid of chucky (laughs) (laughs) that was scary man As as a little kid i couldn't get it out of my head just every doll you pass you're looking at like oh shit (laughs) no thank you and um what do you think hell looks like what do i think hell looks like um (laughs) probably parts of america right now (laughs) it's nice being up here a little bit more north over the border it's like they have some serious problems right now but um Maybe just the generic uh, flames and lava and evil, the devil maybe. I don't know. We're, uh, no one in the band is really, we don't really believe in God or, I mean, I don't know if they believe in heaven and hell, but I don't really ever think of that stuff. I just, uh, I kind of just think when you die, you die. I don't know. Right. I um, guess I'll just find out then. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we all will, I suppose. But, <laughs> you know, probably just that flames and fire well i hope i don't end up there (laughs) it could be a good time i like the heat oh yeah yeah who knows maybe maybe lemmy is actually on the throne and then then Mm. i'd like to visit it (laughs) potentially and uh if you get get rid of one thing in this world what would it be uh religion (laughs) (laughs) yeah strong strong religion no doubt it's caused nothing but wars and disconnection between between people i don't think there's any benefit besides maybe on an individual level where people feel like they have faith and they have a reason for living or a purpose to strive for things but for me you're on this earth because of your parents and i mean your purpose is to live and you need to have faith and belief in yourself to get through things but you know if someone wants to believe in god and all that it's up to them but don't push it on me because yeah, I, I completely I'm not agree, gonna man. listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've also feel like you you know, you should be sufficient to yourself, not to some book oh. or God, you know what I mean? One hundred percent, man. For me but, it's also it, I would also say religion or, or politics because you know, those things yeah. really cause wars. <laughs> it's true, but at like when you grow older you kinda like how old are you right now? Seventeen. Right. So I could not have cared less when I was 17 about politics, but now that I'm a little bit older, I understand what purpose they have as far as a community, maybe like local politics are important, but like the big ones, you know, like for your town, like that's important, but for your country, it's, I personally believe you don't really have much impact and they're going to do what they want to do anyways. So maybe that that's terrible advice because if everyone did that, then (laughs) the world would fall apart. But, (laughs) <laughs> i don't know the politics do are like they are important because they get things done whether it's building schools or roads or healthcare and stuff like that but i mean we don't have it so bad it's other countries that need to fix it oh for sure i could say the same thing in holland <laughs> oh yeah and um where do you hope you and the band will be in 10 years that's difficult man we um music is our passion so i i could not tell you hopefully a few more albums hopefully we're on a bus making lots of money meeting lots of fans every night um definitely headlining hopefully we can headline in a couple years but um really just taking over the metal world i i do genuinely believe that we are going to um I want to word this without sounding like cocky, but I believe in brand of sacrifice. Like I really do. And they all do too. Cause we work so hard and as friends and as a business, there's, there's a lot of chemistry and we, uh, we know what we're doing. I'll put it that way. Awesome. Is there anything you would like to add to the interview? I love Dr. Pepper. I heard you like, uh, <laughs> it's my favorite, my favorite drink. Yeah, it's and, mine uh, too. <laughs> I like the slasher. It reminds me of someone. I can't put my finger on it, though, but slasher. It's a good word. And, uh, yeah, I should get some Dr. Pepper. But Oh, yeah, me too, man. (laughs) Until then, I'll drink drink my water. Good old boring water. Mm. Can't get enough. (laughs) Well, I guess that about sums it up. Thank you so much for your time, man. 
Dude, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. You have waited this long. Hell no longer awaits.